Let's now dive into Red Hat OpenShift AI and some of its technical components. One of the most important aspects of OpenShift AI is that it's built on OpenShift. When you're utilizing OpenShift AI, you can utilize all the different services that already make OpenShift great. Things like OpenShift pipelines, GitOps, serverless, or service mesh. All the tooling that's built within OpenShift and things like security and monitoring can be leveraged when you're creating your end-to-end -end AI ML ops process. We have designed OpenShift AI around both predictive and generative AI, ranging from small models that might be no more than a gig in size, all the way to the larger LLMs, which can take upwards of 180 gigs. By utilizing OpenShift AI, you also have the collaborative experience that comes with the product. Being able to share your models, share your experiments, and be able to collaborate with other team members all through the power of OpenShift AI. This allows you to have a full DevOps end-to-end -end experience. Also, by being built on top of OpenShift, it will allow you to deploy your models anywhere you need them. This allows you to overcome something called data gravity. Ultimately, your services will need to live close to your data. This may be in the cloud, but it could also be on-prem or even at the edge. Being able to train where your data is and then being able to deploy and host your models where your consumers are is critical for the end-to-end -end experience in your AI ops journey. This leads us to the five pillars of what makes up OpenShift AI. We have model development, using tools like notebooks to do your experimentation phases and ultimately train your models in a collaborative way across multiple teams. Once that's finished, being able to serve your model or infer your model where you need it. It could be within your cloud Rosa instance running in AWS, or it could be even at the edge. You get to pick where your models are deployed. We also have a variety of different serving technologies available to you. We'll talk about some of those here in a moment, but you're not just limited to one type of model. We provide the serving capabilities of many types of models throughout the entire industry. This leads to the need of model monitoring, being able to detect things like data drift and model rot. This will allow you to see if your model is not performing as it is expected to perform within production. This will allow your data scientists and your platform engineers to respond accordingly. We also have data and model pipelines. Being able to create a full AI ML ops experience from end to end. Lastly, let's talk about distributed workloads. Traditionally, AI models have been built usually on large, vertically scaled systems. Until recently, we started to see a growth in the area of distributed AI models. This is perfect for a platform like OpenShift, which is a distributed platform. This will allow us to leverage different nodes to split the workload for both training and hosting models. Now let's look at the overall architecture of OpenShift AI. Here we have an image that shows all the different places that OpenShift AI can be deployed. We've talked about a few of these already. We have things like bare metal on-prem. We have options for different virtualization platforms. We have the different cloud options and even the edge. These all allow OpenShift to run where you need it to run. 
We then have the different AI accelerators. So the GPUs and NPUs needed to power your AI training and inference. On top of that, we have the different services that come with OpenShift AI as we discussed previously. Let's look a little bit more at these technical components within the architecture. Here we have a variety of different technologies that make up OpenShift AI. We've talked about a few of these already, but let's talk about the workbenches. These are the notebooks that allow a collaborative interface for data scientists to run experiments and to train models. We have a variety of different data science libraries ready out of the box, and you have the opportunity to bring in your own libraries by modifying these workbenches and the images that come with them. Similar to how we do things with applications, we provide a set of images and you have the option of building on top of those. We have distributed workloads like Kubre and Codeflare. We have different model serving options. Let's dive into this a little bit more. You could think of a server engine like a runtime of some sort, maybe like Tomcat or Apache. You have the option of hosting a model and providing some type of protocol or API to make that model publicly available. Now, the runtime is specific to the type of model that's being run. There are a variety of popular runtimes right now, and this is no different than Java or Python, the different types of JVMs and runtime technologies that make application hosting possible. Lastly, we have model monitoring. By using technologies like Prometheus that are already within OpenShift, we can leverage current technology and provide new features that allow models to be monitored throughout its entire life cycle. Ultimately, OpenShift AI provides you the foundation to build your end-to-end -end AI experience and process all within one location. We won't lock you in to a specific vendor technology, and we provide you with all the different open source technologies that make up OpenShift AI. Also, because OpenShift can be deployed really anywhere, you can have hybrid configurations where you have on-prem training models and then deploying those models in the cloud closer to your services and consumers and even out into the edge. By leveraging the existing DevOps tools that we have within OpenShift, like pipelines and GitOps, you can create a rich AI ML ops experience from end to end.